Hello everyone and welcome to the International Trade Center Web TV program. My name is Muriel Siki. Today we will focus on women's entrepreneurship in the African continent. As you know, March 8th is International Women's Rights Day, focusing this year on innovation and technology for gender equality. The latest figures show that there is a huge gender gap in this field. 37% of women do not use the internet and 259 million fewer women than men have access to the internet, even though they represent half the world's population. This lack of inclusion has a cost, both economically and socially for women in developing countries. To talk about this important topic, let me introduce our guests. To start with, Madam Ambassador Usha Dwarka Kanabadi. Hello, you are a career diplomat, currently the permanent representative of the Republic of Mauritius at the United Nations office. Prior to this appointment, you were Secretary for Foreign Affairs of Mauritius, and you also headed the Multilateral excuse me, Economic Directorate. Welcome to you, Madam Ambassador. Also with us is Pamela Koch Hamilton, Executive Director of the International Trade um, Center, the ITC, the Joint Agency of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development and the World Trade Organization. And for those who don't know, the role of the ITC is to help empower women around the world, allowing them to participate in international trade. You were nominated in 2020. Previously, you were director of the Division on International Trade and Commodities at UNCTAD. It's very hard to pronounce, sorry about that. Welcome to you, you. Ms. Coke Hamilton. Madam Ambassador, let me start with you. Um, the Republic of Mauritius is a member of the African Union. Can, so can you tell us a little bit more about the situation of women entrepreneurs in Africa? Well, you know, in terms of representation, Africa has a very good story to tell, surprisingly. The level of women entrepreneurs in Africa is perhaps the highest globally. About 25 to 30% of women in Africa are entrepreneurs. And the contribution that they make to African continent GDP is almost 13% of GDP. But you have the other side of the story. You have 23 million women entrepreneurs in Nigeria, 41% of businesses, micro-businesses in Nigeria occupied by women. But when you look at the situation of women on the boards in Africa, across the continent, you find only 14%. So some great stories to tell and some less great stories to tell. But I think with AFCFTA, with new developments in Africa, with the help of the ITC and the wonderful She Trades program, there's got a good future for women entrepreneurs in Africa. So that brings me to this question, Ms. Koska yeah. Hamilton. How does the ITC help women entrepreneurs break down the barriers uh, that they often have? Thanks so much, um, Muriel, and thanks for having me. And it's really an honor to be on this interview with Ambassador Kanabadi. She's been such a support to us. Um, let me just start by saying I believe in systemic change. And I think one of the difficulties we've had across the world in terms of actual uh, long lasting change is the issue of systems. And so what ITC does is we work at three different levels in terms of changing systems. We work at the business level, work at the institutional level, and we work at the policy level. At the business level, we work directly with women-owned and run businesses. And what we try to do is to work with them to um, do business programming, uh, training, mentoring, um, design labeling, packaging, and also on the logistics level with UPS and Unilever and other companies to ensure that they're actually able to not just develop their products, but access the markets. And then at the institutional level, we work with institutions on the ground across Africa. We already have about 12 hubs, um, she trades hubs so far. That's our, our program. And then from there, we uh, multiply throughout the countries. And we'll be adding about 10 more this year. And finally, we work at the policy level through our she trades outlook program, which actually helps countries determine how far have they moved the needle in terms of women's economic empowerment and women's inclusion? So those are the three levels we work with. And then we have champions like Ambassador to help us through the process and to stand up for us in their countries. So before we continue our discussion, mm -hmm. let's look at a video. And it is a success story, the story of Marie Laouimir in Casablanca, who started her own handcrafted ice cream factory. And it is truly an example of a successful woman entrepreneur.
j'ai commencé avec zéro ou même moins zéro. Euh, je n'avais pas de capital. Euh, mon histoire, c'est que l'histoire de cette société, c'est que j'étais employée, j'avais un rêve, je voulais avoir une société. Et, euh, et j'ai fait un, un prêt et, et j'ai commencé. Dans cette structure, il y a 17 personnes qui, euh, qui travaillent, qui ont fait des glaces artisanales, des glaces et des sorbets de qualité supérieure, destinées aux restaurants et aux hôtels. Et en 2017, on a lancé notre marque pour le grand public. Donc à Casablanca, en tant que femme entrepreneur, on a la même vie que l'homme entrepreneur, c'est-à-dire que face aux administrations, aux banques, aux clients, aux fournisseurs, tous les interlocuteurs que l'on a, on a la même vie. Maintenant, je pense que quand on est femme entrepreneur dans une petite ville, pas dans les grandes villes, peut-être que là, l'homme est plus présent pour les volets financiers ou administratifs, la femme apparaît moins. Par contre, le défi que l'on a, c'est qu'on est des femmes. Donc, on a des vies euh, rempli dans nos foyers, on est maman, on doit gérer nos foyers et on doit être aussi présent dans nos foyers, donc il faut trouver l'équilibre, c'est ça le défi. Il faudrait que, que ce soit plus simple pour nous, c'est-à-dire qu'on ait des accès à, à l'administration, à des déblocages de dossiers, à des financements de manière que ce soit plus facile. Et la formation, c'est important, c'est très important, nous... c'est comme une bouffée d'air. Moi, je pense qu'une des clés du succès, c'est d'avoir de, des valeurs dans, le, dans, dans la manière de travailler et euh, avoir des valeurs dans le business. Et une des valeurs, pour moi, c'est important, c'est le respect. C'est le respect et c'est aussi la, le développement de l'autre. Donc moi, je fais de l'insertion professionnelle. Donc les gens, ils viennent, ils n'ont pas de diplôme, ils n'ont pas d'expérience et on les forme. On les forme à un vrai métier. J'ai une personne qui, qui a un niveau de, de CM1, donc elle n'a pas complété son école primaire. Et euh, comme elle était smart, euh, elle, a, elle était femme de ménage au début, puis ensuite elle a appris à faire les glaces. Et aujourd'hui, elle a la fonction d'un bac plus 4, c'est-à-dire qu'elle est responsable production, euh, qu'elle fait de la R&D, euh, qu'elle gère une équipe. Donc ça, c'est un succès pour nous. C'est un succès, c'est un réel pilier dans la société. Notre fierté, c'est qu'en 2017, on a lancé, comme je vous ai dit, notre marque et qu'aujourd'hui, depuis le début septembre, euh, on a notre premier point de vente et on s'est rallié à une grande chaîne de supermarchés au Maroc. Et, on est, et les, les gens consomment nos produits en connaissant notre marque et, et c'est un grand pas en avant parce qu'on nous a fait confiance aussi. Et, euh, et voilà, c'est le premier pas vers, on espère, le succès. Ce que je voudrais dire aux femmes, c'est que moi, j'étais très, très peureuse. Il fallait que mon salaire, que je sois dans des structures qui me sécurisent. Mais j'étais toujours très ambitieuse. Alors, et j'avais un rêve. Alors, il fallait que je, que je fasse avec ces trois éléments qui n'ont rien à voir. Alors, un jour, j'ai eu le déclic. Et, et comme je croyais en mon rêve, eh ben, j'ai dépassé mes peurs. Et, et si elles ont un rêve, si les femmes ont un rêve d'entreprendre, il faut qu'elles abandonnent jamais. I think that's good advice, to live your dreams, dare to take risks. Uh, but what is interesting in this video, Madam Ambassador, is that women and entrepreneurs basically face the same challenges all over the world. Marie uh, Laoumiri talks about juggling work and family. Uh, do you think these are universal themes for women? I was going to say, what an amazing woman. Yeah. I mean, to think of what she says to us, what we talk about all the time. No capital, minus. I have a life to live. So the expectations from me as a woman are different from the expectations from a man. I have to manage the family, and that equilibrium is not always easily found. No. Plus, if I need to have access to finance, and I need to have access to technology, I need to have access to anything, it's much more complex for me. Mm. So I think, yes, across professions, I think women have still that little added work that they need to do. They face basically the same um, problems. Same problems. Is that your view also? Because she also talks about work ethics. She talks mm -hmm. about respect. She mm -hmm. talks about training. Yep. Again, those are universal Challenge. problems and challenges. Mm -hmm. Well, we found that, you know, besides the anecdotal evidence that suggests that, yes, women have to work two to three times as yes. hard for, and you know, you've, you're in we this all, field, we all, we, we all face it. Um, 
one of the biggest challenges we've seen, at, at least for women entrepreneurs, women in business, has been the issue that uh, Ambassador mentioned about access to finance. The fact that women are not able to access finance in as easy or straightforward a way as men, for whatever reason, we know. Some of them have to do with cultural norms. Some of them simply have to do with the fact that many women do not have their business records in order. Many women are small. And so these are all issues that tend to mitigate against, militate against women actually um, accessing finance. But what we've tried to do at ITC is to put together our She Trades Invest program. And just to give you one example of a very important um, project that we did in, the Zam in Zambia. And we, there's a woman who runs a place called Wide Energy. And we were able, through merely $200,000 of seed investment, to have her bring electricity and uh, cheap energy to 6,000 households, 9,000 households, sorry, and 60,000 people had access to electricity and therefore digital connectivity for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that's the multiplier effect. So is money basically the the argument, or the problem? Is it money? Is it finding finance, you think, for women entrepreneurs? Well, I think I think Pamela answered that. I think the IMF or World Bank says there's a deficit of like 42 billion only for Africa for the women entrepreneurs. So they need that money to go ahead. The question is, is not only uh, money, yes, but first you need literacy. Mm -hmm. You need people to read and write and to do things. You need access. Mm -hmm. And then you need affordability, the money part of it. So I think it's very multifaceted. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, when I look at ITC, for example, and the role ITC could play, I see the ITC as the linchpin. And then uh, onto that, I would add WIPO and I would add ITU mm -hmm. to bridge those divides. How do you protect women? How do you protect a patent? Mm -hmm. How do you protect whatever she invented? Make it free. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let WIPO take care of that and bring come onto the She Trades program and then bring in also ITU, give her that digital mm -hmm. part of it. You talked about electricity, for example, basic infrastructure is also an issue. Mm -hmm. And that's not only money for the entrepreneur. It's is the environment conducive enough for me to be able to do something? Mm -hmm. So once you help these women entrepreneurs, basically you're helping the, entire, yes, the whole the families, whole community. communities, and yes. the countries, yeah, which is so important. As we said at the beginning of the program, March 8th is the um, International Women's Rights Day, and the focus this year is access to the digital world. You touched on it a little bit and um, the access also to digital commerce mm -hmm. where women lag far behind men. So how important is that issue for Africa, because it seems like they have maybe other problems than that, or is that a big problem? Yes, Africa has other problems. But the truth is, the digital world is going to be where the future is. So if they're not prepared for where the future is going to be, they're going to be even worse off than they are now. And so for me, one of the critical elements is getting women and other people generally connected. If they're not connected, the whole new phalanx of e-commerce, AI, uh, technology, fintech is lost to them. And so it is therefore critical that they be part of a new digital framework. Only 18% of Africa is connected. Mm -hmm. And of that, probably three, 4% for, for women. And I think that is not, it's not futuristic. It's not thinking ahead because that will result in so much loss to women entrepreneurs across the board in the international trading arena. Mm -hmm. Madam Ambassador, I know that you're very concerned also about this access to technology, but you're also concerned about protection of intellectual property for women entrepreneurs. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, the issue starts this way. We have a great cheat trades program out there. We have a number of women entrepreneurs who are inventing things every day. They're innovators, they don't know. They don't realize necessarily that they are the innovators and the new things. How do you protect them? They've never heard of Madrid and Hague and PCT and what have you. So you need to go out to them and tell them, look, you have a problem, we can help you with that. So my idea is that let's incorporate these in the programs. Let these organizations which are responsible for protecting for, for upholding IP, go out to the women entrepreneur and say, we can help you, we can make this easy for you. Mm -hmm. So let's protect them in what they have created, first of all. And two, there's so much unpatented technology out there. Mm 
somebody has to bring it to them. Mm -hmm. I always give the story of this woman who sells peanuts by the roadside. She has no clue that she has aflatoxin in her peanuts. She never even heard of the word. Somebody can just give her a simple solution to that, and then she can start exporting her peanuts. Mm -hmm. So there are simple solutions we need to find there on that one. And what about ITC? Is, was it doing something to promote this access to, to um, new technologies oh, and to e-commerce? We are actually, we have several programs besides the She Trades, which of course works in, in enhancing their access to markets through e-commerce platforms, the SheTrades.com platform, Etsy and so on. We also have an e-com connect platform. And we've actually combined that recently with the She Trades to see how we can leverage along with the Vice President Harris is planning to launch a program in Africa. And she has asked some of us to look at me mechanisms to join those two things, the digital and gender. How do we enhance that? Partnership is critical. So we do work with WIPO. And we're working right now on a program to enhance the ability of women to access and be able to protect their intellectual property. On the other hand, we also have a um, partnership with ITU through the Equals, and that's also on the digital connectivity um, framework. So we work together um, to ensure that our offering for women, our engagement is multifaceted and that it takes into account all the various elements. Affordability, however, has become one of the big issues. Mm -hmm. And so one of the areas we're working in as well is how do we provide help to, 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 to balance out the cost? For example, Sao Tome and Principe, one gigabyte is $40. In Israel, it's four cents. Mm -hmm. There's so, a problem. There's a problem. And so how do we help to balance that? And we've been working with a company in Zambia again through our Switch On program that actually looks at providing these access boxes, you know, throughout the, the, the communities. And these access boxes give them the ability to sign on, to download information, etc. So it's practical solutions like that. Working with coffee farmers in Rwanda who are actually also able to digitalize the value chain so that they can report and get certified for export to the EU. Because all of these things have become important in terms of establishing the value chain and, and you know all the various elements of that. What's the response of the different governments to all these different programs? Are they favorable? Do they, do they realize that it's important to help these women or are you finding some pushback? No, no, I think if I take the case of Mauritius at least, there's a very strong commitment to helping women entrepreneurs, and I think you feel it across Africa. So I think it's there. Maybe, maybe the issue is one that every government struggles with post-COVID mm. and the limited finances and how much can you do and how much this should be a priority. But it is. I can share something with you yesterday at the discussion in Sedor. We were looking at uh, um, decision-making by women. You can have women in different fields, but decision-making not necessarily comes from them. It can be at lower levels. And I said, but we need to look at the digital gender gap. And they said, why? I said, because by the time we advance everything else, mm -hmm. they would have lost out so many years of efforts we have made. So governments need to be concerned because if you contribute 13% of GDP to the continent, you have to pay attention to who's doing that for you. Absolutely. So you mentioned at the beginning of the program that uh, according to the African um, Development Bank, uh, that Africa has the highest percentage of women entrepreneurs in the world, actually. Women play a huge role in the economic system. Why is that? Why is it women in particular? I was going to say because they're smarter. <laughs> you may, you may. <laughs> but Pamela is one example. I mean, but I mean, I think of the Nana Benz in, to in Togo at the time when I was still very young and I heard about the Nana Benz first time and I asked, why are they called Nana Benz? Ah, they go to the market, they sell material and then they buy Mercedes car. <laughs> so Mercedes Benz, this is how the Nana Benz started. I think women have always had that responsibility for the family, or the technically the men or the bread earners. They see things, they do things. When they don't have butter, they use something else. When they don't have flour, they use something else. So the mind is always working. And I think they always want to improve the fate of family. Yes. So I think this is why they have the drive in them to be able to want to do something. And what is your view on that? Why are why are women so important to, in, in Africa, developing or economies? Developing economies. I have a more nuanced view, but I'm not a diplomat, so I can say <laughs> what, <laughs> I can say what I really think. Um, what I what I believe is that in a lot of ways it's cultural. 
it's cultural because it, we come from Africa in a different mm -hmm. way, right? And one of the things we were discussing when I was at law school in the US was the difference between how black women saw our engagement in the work world and women of different hues, you know, in America. And it was simply because for us, there was never a point when we didn't work. In Africa, women are the largest agricultural producers. Yes. Women are the ones who go to market. Women are the ones who drive so much of the economy. And so in a lot of ways, it's natural, natural entrepreneurship, natural thinking about how to make money. And then you combine that with necessity mm. and you have a perfect storm. You have an entrepreneurial spirit, a creativity and innovativity, and then you have um, the necessity given the fact that there are challenges and you want to provide for your children and you need to provide for a wider community and you combine those it creates an incredible opportunity and an ecosystem it certainly does thank you very much to <laughs> the both of you that concludes our discussion today i want to thank you really both for participating in this itc web tv program we hope that this thought-provoking discussion has helped you better understand the challenges and the needs of women entrepreneurs in today's economy. Thank you for watching.